My Lord, it's a privilege to participate in this debate, although I am disappointed not to be in New York at the UN Commission on the Status of Women this week, which was cancelled last week, which was to celebrate uh, the Beijing Platform for Action, published 25 years ago, which saw countries agree to dedicate themselves unreservedly to addressing the constraints and obstacles to gender equality, thus enhancing the empowerment of women and girls all over the world there is still much to do. Our own government's commitment to advancing equalities for women and girls worldwide is laudable, and I too want to welcome Baroness Sugg's new role. The UK has a strong role to play, not least regarding the vital issue of girls' education. Uh, Last year, I had the privilege of visiting Egypt with the charity Embrace Middle East, and I visited some inspiring community projects, enabling women and girls, Christian and Muslim, to be educated not only in literacy, but also in issues of health, including the prevention of FGM. Girls' access to education is crucial and empowers women and girls to be agents of change in their communities, which actually benefits everyone. Women and girls are also being agents of peace across our world. And again, there are many examples. Last summer, I visited a project in Israel where Jewish and Arab women are working together to produce olive oil and other products. And what they demonstrate is that business and relational concerns enable people, often led by women, to rise above division amidst political negotiations. When we consider advancing equality, it's not only about women achieving positions in institutions that have been designed by and for men. It is also about wider society being shaped by women's voices and experiences. It's also about men and women working together as equals. This benefits everyone, and it's about every person having equal value and the opportunity to achieve their full potential. This commitment to justice and human becoming is core to Christian belief and faith. However, sadly, this is not reflected in the continued prevalence of domestic abuse across our world, here in the UK, and indeed present among people of faith and no faith. It is abhorrent. And I declare an interest as an ambassador of Restored, a charity that campaigns against uh, violence against women. Violence against women affects every sphere of life, as we have heard. And there are many groups across different faiths and around the world who are committed to gender justice and using their voices to be part of the solution, such as Side by Side, a growing global movement. And then just last week, I was delighted to be alongside a passionate group of women, including Nicole Jacobs, the Domestic Abuse Commissioner, at the launch of the Faith and Violence Against Women and Girls Coalition here in the UK. So I'm looking forward to the introduction of the Domestic Abuse Bill in your Lordship's House and constructive discussions about that legislation including proper intervention support for children of domestic abuse as well as migrant women. Anyone of any age and in any circumstances who is suffering domestic abuse deserves appropriate support and a path to safety. So much of what we're talking about today is rooted both in women and girls being valued and being able to value themselves. So before I finish, I want to touch on one final area, which is that of women in the criminal justice system. A high percentage of these women have experienced some form of abuse themselves. Self-esteem is usually very low, and we know that for many of these women, specific provision in the community, particularly in women's centres, is far more effective regarding the transformation of lives and reducing crime. As I've spoken about in your Lordship's house before, I serve as Bishop to Women's Prisons and am President of the Nelson Trust. I welcome the Government's production of a female offender strategy in June 2018. This encouraged trauma-informed and gender-sensitive provision. Nonetheless, the strategy is grossly underfunded and the £5 million of funding for community provision over two years will run out in June. 
I hope the spending review takes account of the potential financial benefits of community alternatives to custody for women, notwithstanding their effectiveness for rehabilitation and wider society. So, as we celebrate International Women's Day, let us celebrate the progress made, but not lose sight of the work still to be done. And that takes me back to the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action 25 years ago. I look forward now to the maiden speech of Lord Ranger.